We specialize in hands-on live training with wholesalers, contractors, engineers, and building maintenance facilities. Before we get started, let's take a quick tour of our new facility. Alright, now let's get started with testing, rebuilding, and troubleshooting the Watts 957 backflow printer. Alright, now we're over here at our Watts LF 957 RPZ device. I want to become a little bit more familiar with this device by introducing our shutoff valve number one, shutoff valve number two, test cock one, test cock two, three, and four. In order to work on this device, the first thing we're going to need to do is shut off the number one gate valve. Once we're shut off, I'm going to shut off the number two. Once we're shut off, all the water is now contained inside this device. We're going to need to relieve that pressure. Step one, open up test cock number two, number three, and number four. Now that we've got all the pressure relieved out of this system, we are going to be able to open this device safely without any water shooting everywhere. First thing I'd like to do is clean off my device. Once we're nice and clean and all the debris has been removed, I'm going to remove test cock number three. Now that test cock number three has been removed, we can set it to the side. Second step is removing the relief valve on our sensor line. Now that that's been removed, it's a very simple process on removing our sleeve and sliding it back. I take a number three Phillips head screwdriver, insert it through the hole, Once that's been open, we're able to pull the stainless steel plate out. Now you have check one and check two and our relief valve. In order to rebuild this, the first thing we're going to need to do is remove check valve number one. You're going to notice there's two small slots on top of this. Insert your screwdriver and turn, turn and turn, sliding the number one check out. Same step for check valve number two. Insert and slide. Once they've been removed, we can now remove our relief valve. Relief valve has been removed. Now we can go over and get started on rebuilding these checks and the relief. Right, now that we've got everything removed from the device, we're going to come over to our table and we're going to work on the proper steps to take this apart and get it rebuilt for you. The first step we're going to do is we're going to grab our number three screwdriver. You're going to notice that there are two slots on both sides and a hole in the cam arm. First we're going to do is slide it through the slot over in the cam arm. Roll it, stick it through. What this is doing is that's actually going to hold the tension from the spring on the inside. Second step, we're going to notice we have a small C-clip holding our pin to our cam arms. We will remove that. Once the C-clip's been removed, push on the pin and remove it. Now we're completely open. What we're going to be looking for on this is checking out our rubber. We need to make sure that there's no dirt, debris, cuts, or rips in this rubber. Any sort of cuts, rips, or debris in this rubber will cause this device to dump. Our first step is 
we're gonna wanna remove our clapper plate. Once all five screws have been removed, we're able, we're able to remove our plate. Next step is going to be removing the rubber out. Take a small screwdriver, get underneath, that rubber will pop out. What we're looking for on this is any sort of debris that has been caught in the rubber. And the best way to do that is to pull it and take a good inspection. Okay, what you're gonna notice here is that we have a complete hole going directly through and all the way through the back of this rubber. This rubber is now gonna be garbage. Second step we're gonna to need to do is take our finger and rub along this seat area. The seat area is where our rubber is actually going to seal to that check valve. If this seal feels nice and smooth, you're in good shape and we're ready to replace that rubber. Now that our rubber has been replaced, we're going to take our cam arm, place it back into the assembly. Oops, sorry. Take our pin. Slide it back through. Take our C-clip, press it back onto our pin. Now, in order to open this device, you'll pull out a number three screwdriver. You'll notice that the tension drops back onto the check itself, and we are ready to go. Check valve number two is the exact same process, the same steps. There's absolutely nothing different. You'll just notice that there'll be a little less tension on the cam arm for number two as there is number one. Now that we've re we have rebuilt check valve one and check valve two, let's go over the proper steps of rebuilding our relief valve. You need an Allen wrench. Remove the four screws. Now that our top plate's been removed, you'll notice that our rubber, in order to get this apart, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our C-clip. Once our C-clip's been removed, we'll pop this straight out. Now, first step we're going to want to do with our relief valve is remove this rubber, open it up completely, and pull and check for any rips or tears or debris. If there's any rips, tears, and debris in this here, we're going to have to replace it. Now that we've reviewed this rubber and checked it, there are no holes, what we're going to do is we're going to roll our rubbers back down. Noticing that the small notch is on the inside, the small notch will go right back inside there. Replace your spring, back into your relief body. Pressing down. relief valve is now rebuilt. Now that you're rebuilt, we'll take all three, our relief, 
our number one check, our number two check, and go get it back installed into the device. All right, now we're back here to the device. Let's get this thing rebuilt. Step one, you're gonna take your number two check. You'll notice that the number two check, when pressing on this cam, has a lot less tension than our number one. So if you go and get these confused, you're okay. Pull back and pull back. This is number two. Notice this O-ring. This is one thing we will have to inspect. And then also take an FDA siliconized lubricant, run it around. Our top will slide our two inch check in. It's in. Same procedure with check valve number one. Make sure you seal and lubricate your O-rings. Once the check valve number one is in, we're gonna replace our stainless steel cover. Cover's been replaced. Now we're back together. Your relief valve, we're going to screw on from the bottom. This has an O-ring seal, so there's no reason for Teflon tape. And it does not have to be buried tightly. It has an O-ring seal, so it should seal up very easily. Now we're gonna replace our sensor line. and replace our number three test cock. Again, it has an O-ring, so use an FDA-approved siliconized lubricant. Now your device is completely rebuilt. The next step you're going to take, close test cock four, close three, and close two. Once all of our test cocks are closed, we're gonna slowly open up, shut off valve number one, open up test cock two, relieve our air, three, Relieve our air and four. Open off shut off valve number two. And open a downstream fixture to make sure you have proper flow. Hopefully. All right, now that we've completely rebuilt this Watts 957, you guys are going to feel much more comfortable out in the field getting this rebuilt. Last step testing this to make sure everything is working properly. Do is make sure that our shutoff valve number one is in a fully open position. Shutoff valve number two is in a fully closed position. Today we're going to be testing this 957 with our Watts TK9A analog tester. To get started with this, make sure that your high pressure is in the closed position, your low is in a closed position, and the vent is in a closed position. Let's get started testing this device. The first step we're going to take in testing this device is we're going to be testing our number one check valve. In order to do that, we're going to connect our high pressure hose to test cock number two. Connect our low pressure hose to test cock number three. Open test cock three. Open test cock two. We're going to open our vent.
Then open our high control and bleed any necessary air out of this device. We will open the low control valve and bleed any air out. And close. What we need to do now is observe the gauge to verify that the check valve number one is creating a minimum pressure differential equal to or greater than 5 PSI in order to continue with the test. Looks like we're sitting at 8. Alright, the second test we're going to run is we're going to be testing the pressure differential on the relief valve. The relief valve must maintain a pressure differential of at least 2 PSI between the relief valve zone and the supplied pressure. In order to do that, we're going to close the vent control, open the high control, and slightly open the low control valve in order to increase the water pressure in the immediate pressure zone. The gauge needle should begin to drop towards zero and observe when the water first begins to discharge from the relief port. Observing the gauge reading at which the discharge first occurs and record the PSI reading shown on the gauge. Record the relief valve as passed if the water discharges at 2 PSI or greater. Compare the gauge reading obtained from check valve number one and the relief valve. The check valve number one PSI must be three PSI or greater than the relief valve PSI for the check valve number one to pass. Close the high control and the low control valve. Test number three. We're going to be checking and testing the number two check valve. The check valve must hold tightly against back pressure. We're going to open up the vent control, open up the high control valve to bleed out any air. Close the high control valve, open the low control valve and bleed out any air. Close the low control valve. We're now going to connect the vent hose to test cock number four. Open the high control valve. While observing the gauge, we're going to open test cock number four. The gauge needle may drop slightly, then should remain static if the number two check valve is holding tightly. Record check valve num number two as either passed or failed on your test form. All right, the last and final test is testing the shutoff valve number two. While observing the gauge, close test cock number two. The gauge needle might dry, drop slightly, but should remain static if shutoff valve number two is drip tight. If the gauge needle continues to drop towards zero, then the shutoff valve number two is leaking. We'll also be opening up a downstream fixture from the shutoff valve number two to create flow and accurate, accurately determine if the shutoff valve number two is holding tightly. Record shutoff valve number two as passed or failed on your form. If shutoff valve number two is leaking, then you must repair it or replace the valve and repeat all tests. Open up shutoff valve number two. Close all test cocks. Remove the high. 
low. And vent hose. Make sure that you open up all your controls on your Watts TK9 tester in order to get rid of all the water. Make sure that the water is onto the building. All right, now that we've completely reviewed the device, gone over testing procedures and rebuilding, hopefully you guys feel much more confident in working with this device out in the field. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out at thisandmclean.com.